Although Rutherford was still in demand, the hectic war pace had eased, and he was able to find time to return to his own research. Now the next problem was to examine whether means could be found to break up the stable elements by artificial methods. The idea of the nuclear structure of atoms, which I suggested in 1911, has proved very useful for this purpose. It became clear that to effect a veritable transformation of an atom, it was necessary to change the charge or mass of a nucleus, or both together. Now, the minute nuclei of atoms are held together by powerful forces, and to effect their disintegration, it seemed likely that a very concentrated source of energy must be applied to the individual atom. The bombardment of the nuclei by the energetic alpha particles from radium appeared to be the most promising method for such a purpose. Rutherford used this very simple apparatus for a very profound experiment. He had a radioactive source emitting alpha particles on the end of this plunger that could be moved. At the far end is a scintillating plate which could be looked at with a microscope. Through here he could put different gases in this brass tube and if he shifted the radioactive source further away from here than the alphas could possibly reach the screen. He still saw weak flashes. This was caused by the alpha particle striking nitrogen nuclei and emitting a proton. And that proton was very high energy and could reach the screen. When called to a meeting on submarine detection, Rutherford sent a message saying his attendance would be delayed due to the necessity of completing experiments in which he thought he had split the nucleus. If this is true, its ultimate importance is far greater than that of war. Rutherford's previous work had been observational, confirming radioactivity as nature's own alchemy. Now he himself had become the world's first successful alchemist, turning nitrogen into oxygen. When the alpha particle hit the nucleus, the nucleus split into an oxygen nucleus and a hydrogen nucleus. Rutherford was the first person to split the atom. The war ended in November 1918, and the academic institutions began picking up the pieces. For Rutherford, getting a good team around him again was proving difficult. He had hoped to tempt Niels Bohr to join him as a professor, but Bohr had pledged to develop physical science in his homeland of Denmark. In 1919, J.J. Thompson stepped down as head of the Cavendish Lab in Cambridge. The position was now offered to Rutherford. Manchester had been good to Rutherford, and the family was happy there. However, it wasn't always a perfect environment. Living in the city at the time, it was polluted, the buildings were black, it rained, sooty rain. In fact, Mark Twain had visited Manchester not that long before Rutherford was there, and he, had, he made this quotation about Manchester. I would like to live in Manchester, England. The transition between Manchester and death will be imperceptible. For Rutherford, the prospect of directing the most famous physics laboratory in the world was too good an opportunity to decline. And so, in mid-1919, he farewelled Manchester and returned to Cambridge and the Cavendish lab. J.J. Thompson, the father of the electron, handed over to Ernest Rutherford, the father of the nucleus. Under Rutherford's leadership, the world of physics was about to expand. The dawn of the big machines was imminent, as X-rays and Crookes tubes gave way to neutrons and particle accelerators. Oh, I don't know why my speed's so high. Oh. 
Now I'm settled down and all the love's quite small. For I, alas, am helium less since I got that dreadful blow. But oh, I'm feeling sickly, still no one now denies that I ran the race so quickly. I wanna know. 